girl like you. Girls like you? Yeah, probably girls like you. Let's try to throw the S on there. Just, ah, just for the hell of it. That's right. All right, five ways to overcome insecurity to your relationship. We're going to get right into it, but I wanted to waste a couple seconds of time. A uh, lot of great things going on. Life is groovy, great. I've been traveling a lot, ah, and it's like gonna apparently uh, going to continue uh, a bunch more. So I've had to figure out a way to record on the fly, on the show, on the out there, right? And not really ruin what I feel like is kind of a cool little part of my Dan Radio style, the whole radio thing. So I'm probably going to have to do the music separate, and I can edit it in easily. But when I do the videos, I'm going to be like, hey, that was that. And I'll, I, so it might be harder to, uh, you know, play talk over the music or whatever. So anyway, that being said, I think that's where I can probably get away with pulling it off. I've tried. I, when I was out of town last time, I tried so hard to figure out a way. I literally, I screwed with this for hours. And it's just, it's really hard to play music and then also record at the same time and use the microphone that I got on my headset or whatever, right? So, little technical things. Anyway, five ways to over, overcome insecurity. I'm being insecure right now, right? I should just do what I do. And if you guys like it, you listen. If you don't, you won't. That's kind of how that plays out. Five ways. A lot of us do this. A lot of us are insecure. A lot of us are, I mean, it's normal. First off, okay, let's stop. No, don't back up. No, no, no. No need for that. Just stop first. We're all doing this. We're all a part of this. We're all, we have our moments of insecurity. That's okay. Now, it's not beneficial. It's not helping you. But when you're aware of it, like, okay, cool. I, I, I am being insecure right now. That You're right. And call me on it. Thank you. I'm going to grow and learn and develop. I realize that's part of it. I say some affirmations. I'm like, ah, I'm good enough. I'm great enough. Everyone loves me. Blah, blah, blah. Whatever the hell, right? Whatever whatever your thing is. Yes, that's super important. And you should definitely keep that in mind. Don't get mad at yourself when you do it. That's not, that, does, that benefits nobody. Beating yourself up. Believe me. And this is coming from one of the biggest critics in the whole wide world of themselves. I It's my serious thing that I, ha, am mastering. And I, Figure I'm probably bringing energy towards it. We'll see how ready I am for it, right? We'll see how ready I'm. 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 I'm I've been practicing. My chi is good. My kai, my ki, I. Right. My 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 kata is on on par. I, right. Whatever the case is, pretty good. Working my way through it. Don't be mad at yourself. That's my point. As I strand strand strander. Yeah, wander is the word, but whatever. I don't know where my brain goes. Okay, five ways. Think about your emotions. What? I know. A lot of us are just like, emotions happen. Ah, there is that. But a lot of times, emotions actually come from thoughts that seed them. Not always. Sometimes we just feel things crazy willy-nilly. I get that. Well, I don't. But I do. I understand the concept. But look at where the emotions are come from. When you use emotions to kind of guide your, well, he must be doing this, then this must be happening, then this must be happening, or she must be doing this because of this, and then, blah, blah. Ah, Step back a second. Look at your emotions for a second. Look at the conclusions you're coming to. Look at what you're trying to figure out. Look at what you're thinking. Are you on the right track? Are you? Are are you? Probably not. We're being a little crazy right now, right? We're being a little, whoa. It's okay. Again, if you're being insecure, it's okay. If you're maybe being a little emotional right now, it's okay. It's not appropriate. It's not benefiting your relationship. Stop yourself, catch yourself, see it. Look at it. What's going on? Why am I upset? What what's causing this? What? Bah. Again, as I've talked about before, don't throw a band-aid on the wound when the wound's going to keep producing something that you need to put a band-aid on. Instead, treat the wound. Throw some salve on there. Salve? I don't know what the right word is. Salve, I think. And then, or Neosporin to go brand name. Oh, not a suitable for all advertisers. It's probably coming. Believe me, watch. It'll happen. Uh, again, that sort of thing, right? Throw a little of that on there. Put a Band-Aid. Now, maybe we're making a difference. We're actually treating the wound. We're not just on top of it. Look into the cause. What's, what's causing this, this outbreak? What's causing this problem? Ask questions. If you're having issues with something, I wonder if they're doing this. I wonder I wonder if she's talking to him, right? Uh, I'm looking on Facebook, and I see they've got pictures together. Ah, oh, he was over here on Instagram. They did this. Again, 
Social media will mess up your whole entire life if you stalk people that you're not prepared to see the worst of. If you're not ready to see the worst thing that could possibly happen and you're stalking them, you're probably going to see the thing that freaks you out the most. Don't do it. It's not worth it. Not. No. Don't. Stop. That's all. That's where the pump breaks, they would say. So we're asking ourselves questions. We're wondering questions about them. Like, right, why are you doing this? Why are you doing that? Why aren't we talking? If it's a question of uh, an ex, be careful. Don't be, don't be, don't be like so overbearing with the questions because maybe you've already asked too many. Maybe you're kind of being needy. Different story, right? But in the sense of we're kind of a healthy sort of relationship and I'm wondering things like, hey, do you have a girlfriend, right? Like if you're wondering questions, there are ways to initiate answers to those questions without looking overly obvious, even though you'll maybe still, but you could be talking about things like, oh yeah, and then with family and this, right? And we went, my parents, we went over here to the Grand Canyons and Grand Canyons. And, and um, so do you and your family, like you, like your wife, kids, do you like, do you guys all kind of go, right? Just throw it like that, right? Wife, kids, yeah. And then do you guys all just kind of travel together, maybe go back and see the family and then they will, they will clarify Almost always, oh no, no, no wife, no kids, no. I'm a, I'm a unibomber, and I park my truck outside of people's houses that I'm no right. Like who knows? But hopefully that's not the case. Because if it is, run, run, ba, 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 away, fast, hard, no. Ask questions. If you're not sure what's going on, ask. Find a way to ask. I'm very about being involved with the universe. A lot of people are like, it'll fall on my lap. I am not someone that will ever tell you to do that. Don't just wait until it exactly happens the way you think it's going to happen. No, never. Don't. No, never. La, 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 la. Stop listening to those people. There is a point to where action takes place. There is a mixture. I know a lot of people are like, ah, whatever. You have some fancy Goddard phrase. I know you're going to get mad at me. No, I disagree. There's a point where you bring things close. Your circles will get close. It's the reality of it, man. This is all I'm trying to share with you. I don't care what you've read. Here's what the reality... I've studied this, right? I watch the way it happens with other people. That's all I'm saying. It'll get close. It'll get super close. Sometimes maybe it will fall on your lap, but it'll get close for sure. When it does, grab hold of it. Grab those reins. Ask questions if you have to. Avoid comparing. One thing a lot of us do, we make this mistake frequently... We compare ourselves to other people, maybe other people that we think are fantastic, that we think are the greatest person. In exa- For example, like maybe like I'm a guy, right? Like maybe Brad Pitt, maybe George Clooney, just two dudes up the top of my head. There's a lot of really buff dudes. I mean, I could go down a whole slew of younger guys that, but I mean, they, yeah, they're younger. I'm going to kick them out of the, the loop. But the older dudes that are way hotter than me, all right, well, that's frustrating, right? This guy's like 10 years older, 12 years older, whatever. Man, he's smoking hot. Every woman in the world wants him. What? What's going on? Same concept happens. A lot of us make these comparisons to things that aren't right. I mean, maybe George Clooney is a wonderful guy. He seems like it. Dad Gummit, like debonair, nice. Like he just seems like he's friends with everybody. Like, I don't know. I hope he kicks puppies or punches babies in the face or something just to make me feel better about myself. But I don't know this. From what I understand, he's a really super nice guy. But again, you got your Brad Pitt. You got all these people. He's helping children in Africa. He's adopting everybody, like right everybody. Him and Angelia, Jelena, even though I think he's made a baby now with uh, with uh, with Jen, right? Like, I don't normally follow this stuff, but it's ironic that we're on the topic. So thank you for bringing it up. Exactly. So again, don't compare yourself. That's my point. We're not them. We're not living their life. We're They're not living ours. And there's a lot to be said about what we present to the world. Everybody knows the whole concept with Facebook, right? Like, you don't post your crappy pictures ever, right? Why? Because they're the crappy pictures. You don't want everybody to see that your family sucks just as bad as theirs, even though it does. Everybody's trying to present this perfect version of themselves. We're, we're all human. All of us. Stop trying to compare yourself. It's not going to benefit you, and they're not better than you. And the most important part is the person that loves you, loves you for more than just that thing that you're giving them credit for. Maybe they're really pretty. Maybe they have a better figure. Maybe they're funnier. Maybe they're smarter. Maybe they're whatever. You are a combination of so many awesome things 
That's why they fell in love with you. It's all of you. It's not the thing. It's not the, ooh, she looked so good. Whatever. And guys are very visual, so that's not fair. And women are into stories, so they're like 50 shades of gray. Most men, we can't live up to that. We can't. I can't. I can't. I can't. I know I can't. Maybe that's a limitation. I know I could work on it. Whatever. But that guy's like rad in his own little woman's fantasy way. That's okay. And likewise with guys, there's some really pretty, but when you talk to them, they're like, duh, I don't know what a papaya is, right? Like, you don't even know what to do with these people anymore after you're like, oh, that's great. Um, I don't know. Take a long walk. I, I don't even know what the right thing to say. So again, comparing ourselves just leads down muddy waters. It's not a fair comparison. Take a walk in my shoes. I'll take a walk in your shoes. Both you and I will have very different feelings about each other. We don't know what it's like to be someone else. Stop comparing yourself to them. Early on, lay ground rules. Let's just four. Eh, thing. Let's just lay out the title. Lay ground rules. Early on in relationships, it's important. Sometimes things might happen. Things may go in a certain direction. We're like, oh, this is getting a little too familiar, a little too, ah, oh, it's not something I'm happy with. Been here before, been there, done that red flag. Ah, bah, 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 right? Flags are popping up everywhere. It's a place to lay down the ground rules. It's a place to say that's not okay. It's a place to say, I appreciate that. It's a place to say, yeah, when you didn't get home and you said you were going to let me know that you were home, I was actually nervous and worried. And I didn't want to pester you. And I, maybe I should have, but I, 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 you know, I didn't know. And I was nervous. Like, I didn't know you were home. And like, what do I, what do, I do, right? And again, you're, you, you don't want to sound like a freak because, of course, they're like, wow, we've only dated for two months, whatever. I don't know what an unacceptable amount of time is. But again, it's the same concept. It's like, Let's make sure that we're laying out some of these rules early on. Let's make sure that we all understand the game and the rules and how we're going to play. And if, and if you're not laying the rules out, if you're not letting them know, ooh, this kind of bothers me, well, you're kind of shooting yourself in the foot down the road, right? I mean, you're, you're going to let yourself know, hey, hey, you keep doing what you're doing. It bothers me. I'm going to be like oddly passive aggressive, but... You know, you won't really know it, but I'll expect you to know it, but you won't really know it. So we'll take care of it that way. No, no, not helping you. Lay the ground rules out. Be straight. It's like, ah, it wasn't cool when, when, uh, when you didn't call me the other day. It wasn't cool when you, uh, you know, left early and didn't tell me why, or didn't cool. It wasn't cool when you said, didn't say goodbye when you left the party, right? It wasn't cool when whatever. And maybe it was, again, I think also positive reinforcement is very important to remember. Man, it was really awesome when you did that. When you texted me when you got home, that was really cool. And again, when you focus on the positive, believe me, it's amazing what it changes. But it was really awesome when you like gave me that hug before you left. I don't know. It just like really made me feel special before you left. Wait, like whatever the thing is, like thank them for it. Be, be cool for it. Don't be like weird about it. But like one time, you know, a little quick, hey, just wanted to give you a little pat on the back for that thing that I really liked. You like hit the nail. You hit my nail on the head, like perfectly. And you'll be surprised at how that kind of works out to your advantage. So ground rules can be good and bad. I prefer to focus on the good. But again, the bad should not happen either. So it depends who's where we're at in our whole thing. Looking for the positives. Something I preach like freaking all over the place, right? Insanity, how much I love this concept. And so not just in relationships, not just in uh, poor me, not just in uh, trying to get a job, not just in trying to get it, whatever. But looking for the positives, a lot of people are like, well, can't just focus on the positives. That doesn't get anything done. Well, you're right. I mean, from their standpoint, they're 100% right. But what you'll find, oddly, when you're a naysayer, is when you're positive a majority of the amount of the time, when you constantly are like, no, today's going to be a good day. Oh, I just knocked that thing over. It's all right. It's all right. Shit, stuff happens. Ooh, look at that. That's, thank God I'm not on the air. Right? But stuff happens. Ah, whatever. It's cool. It's all right. I learned. I grew. I should have moved that. Shouldn't have happened. Nah. Life is okay. And you'll find that better things tend to happen, that your energy tends to be more positive. And that I've talked about frequently is what creates our realities. It's the law of attractions. What we attract is what we're vibrating at. So when you're like all jacked up and the way you're feeling, when you're like me, right? And you're all messed up. Well, yeah, the messed up stuff is what you're bringing your way. 
look for the positives because frankly, whenever we look at positives, we tend to see positives. We tend to feel positive. When we feel positive, better things tend to happen in our life. It's not like a, if you just think about good things, good things happen. No, not true at all. In fact, I've talked about frequency, frequently. It doesn't matter what you say and think as per much as what really the underlying feeling is. What you think, what you say, what you do. The doing is kind of the feeling, but the feelings are kind of the the power behind it. I really need to start bringing that up because that's actually a good point. What you think, what you say, what you do is the conduit for the feelings, right? It's the external outward showing. And it's why what you think is the weakest, what you say is the middle, and what you do is the strongest when it comes to the array of doing uh, manifesting work. And the reason is, is it's the amount of feeling that has to go into it. Thought takes very little feeling, very little effort, very little, right? Speaking requires you to take that thought and turn it into words. And doing is a far larger step than that. So the doing and acting as if and imagining as if and all that stuff is extremely powerful. So trying to keep ourselves positive, look for the positives. It's rule number one. It's not some crazy, airy-fairy, whatever-the-heck kind of thing. It's, it's a little more, little more interesting than that. So we're going out with a, a great song. Hopefully this helps, by the way. Totally. It's like probably just closing this out. I'm out of practice. I've been traveling. Come on. Be, be kind. And by the way, just to, at this point, for those of you that are huh, any sort of like fans at all, right? Like, dude, that video I put out for Anya, the two, I spent a day and a half trying to export that video I created in my own software. It was so big. Because I recorded really too long and I was trying to trim it, but the size of the... Oh, my God. So, anyway, the second video kind of sucked quality-wise, but I finally got it out. Literally took me a day and a half. So, I'm happy to be back doing regular videos with my camera like it should be. And, uh, yeah, we'll make all that work. Hopefully. Anyways, going out with Bee Gees, rocking him, right? And it's uh, How Deep Is Your Love right here. It's Dan Radio.